Good morning, sisters. Uh, the intentions for Holy Mass this morning for Ella Sylvester, Effie Fox Seang, Dr. Stuart Moore, and Hendrik Martin on their birthdays, for healing for Courtney uh, and Graham Fraser, and for all those recommended to our prayers, and for the repose of the soul of Sister Mary Helen of the Divine Infant of the Cebu Carmel who died early this morning, and those who died recently and the souls in purgatory, and for peace in the world, and for continued blessing and protection on Pope Francis and his pilgrimage in Iraq. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of mercy and compassion. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Kyrie eleison. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christe eleison. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book, first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the people thirsted for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the rod with which you struck the Nile and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock and water shall come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the fault-finding of the children of Israel, and because they put the Lord to the test by saying, 
Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Lord, you have the words of eternal life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The decrees of the Lord are steadfast. They give wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of eternal life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, abiding forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are all of them just. They are more to be desired than gold, than quantities of gold. And sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of eternal life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jew and Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers at their business. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all, with sheep and oxen, out of the temple, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. You shall not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign have you to show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. Will you raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, Many believed in his name 
when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not trust himself to them, because he knew all men and needed no one to bear witness of man, for he himself knew what was in man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> and so this is a very powerful gospel on this third Sunday of Lent, year B. <laughs> and uh, the zeal for the temple consumed him. And the disciples, the apostles, uh, remembered that text when they saw his behavior in the temple and how he was cleaning it out. So that is a great theme uh, in our Catholic tradition. But greater still is the insight that Jesus himself is the new temple. That the physical building was indeed only a sign, a preparation for a, a reality which no one could have imagined, that he himself was the new temple, the new presence of God among people. But what I want to reflect on more closely for a moment is these words at the end of this gospel passage. He knew all men. He needed no one to bear witness of man, for he himself knew what was in man. Jesus knows the human heart, and he knows each person's heart. And he knows what we are capable of. And this works in both ways. He knows the shadow side of our life, and he knows the bright side of our life. He knows the shadow side in the sense that he knows what we are capable of in terms of selfishness, in terms of lack of compassion, cruelty and violence and all the litany of sins that mar the human existence. He knows what is in our heart. But he also knows the possibilities for goodness, the good-heartedness of people as well. And these two things live within us all the time. And no matter how long our profession of love in religious life, or in any form of Christian existence is, uh, we live with this dichotomy in our lives, this constant choice, this constant wavering. And our prayer is, and surely the stimulus from the gospel today is to ask ourselves, uh, do we know it as clearly as Jesus knows us? Do we know ourselves? Have we looked steadily at the shadow side of our life so that we are, if you like, prepared to be surprised by sin and weakness and limitation, that we are steeled against it and know that without the grace of God uh, we cannot succeed. But do we also know what God wants of us? Do, do we know the goodness that is already in us? And clearly we've got to get the balance right if we concentrate on the negative, 
that we are capable of, then we could lose heart. But if we concentrate on the goodness and the opportunities that are given us, then we have a heart-to-heart relationship with Jesus. So we ask him today to purge our hearts as he purged the temple. We invite him to strengthen us and to reveal to us uh, what is possible for us and to what he is calling us. We pray that we will allow Jesus to live in our hearts. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has trusted himself to us, and therefore we pray with great confidence. that our parish may be the Father's house, a dwelling place of God's compassion and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That the churches and the faith communities of the Christian world may look beyond their different expression of belief and celebrate together the wisdom and love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That the work of scientists and doctor researchers may enhance our respect for nature and our gratitude to God for the wonders of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord That couples and families experiencing difficult times in their lives together may realize a new presence of Christ in their midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may imitate the crucified Christ in our selfless outreach to the poor, the forgotten, and the abandoned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all who have died, especially Sister Mary Helen, and those who will return to God during this Lenten season, may share the eternal victory of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, That God may hear the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, We come before you, O God, with open and humble hearts. Give us the vision to seek you in all things, that our lives may be made complete in your joy and made whole in your compassionate love through Christ our Lord.
So let us pray together that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbour through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for renewing and purifying their hearts, that freed from the disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our bishop, and Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace 
and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, give take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 